So, we had simply formulated the resolution rules, we had four rules in the resolution for first order logic. One was your binary resolution, uh, which is just like your resolution in propositional logic, okay. but along with most generally unifier now. Then the other rule was the factor rule, okay, which unifies a sub class of the class, then takes or applies that most generally unifier on the whole class, that will be considered as a as deduced from the original class. Then you have the paramodulant, so which is specially for the equality predicates. Okay. There if you have two classes, uh, one is having some equality uh, literal like say t equal to u and then the other one is having some formula where s occurs, s is another term. Then you take most general unifier of s and t, call it sigma. Now delete t equal to u, delete x of s, add x of u and then to the union of those two classes and then apply your most general unifier sigma, that was the paramodulant. Then we have another equality axiom, which we wrote as a rule, that is anywhere you can introduce t equal to t. These are the four rules of resolution. Then we wanted to discuss one example. So, the earlier example which says uh, everyone who buys a ticket receives a prize, therefore, if there are no prizes, nobody buys a ticket, right? That was the example we are considering. So, let us write it in first order logic. So, we start with everyone who buys a ticket. So, there is a ticket which x buys. then uh, that person x receives a prize. So, there is a prize which x receives, okay. that was our uh, only premise. Therefore, if there are no prizes, then nobody buys a ticket. Okay. So, this is the consequence we wanted to prove by resolution. So, first thing is we have to use deduction theorem or array whatever, then bring it to the closal form. Fine. So, we will use both deduction theorem and array. So, first this one will be taken to the premise side, next this one will be taken with negation sign. So, double negation we are using, so we will just omit it. That is we have for each x, there is y, t y and b x y implies there is y, p y and r x y. Along with that we have not there is x p x and then we use array. So, we have the other one there is x there is y t y and b x y. This should enter bottom due to deduction theorem and reductio ad absurdum. Okay. Next we take them into closure form without sharing a variable, closure should not share variables right that we have to take care. Okay. So, first is from this one, first one says for each x, this becomes for each y when goes out. So, that is the other one comes as there is. So, we rename this, there is z, this y becomes z now, t y and b x y implies p z and r x z. Okay. Let us write the same way. Next, the other one is almost in the form. So, that gives for each x not p x, we are going to omit the inversal quantifiers. So, better to keep it in that form. Next, but x is already used, let us write it as u. Okay. Next, we have 
two existential quantifiers, okay. there is no for all before it. So, they will be simply replaced by some constants, Skolem constants, which will be new to the all the consequences, everything they should be new. So, you write T A and B, let us write B here, A B, it is not necessary, but let us write that. So, this is the set of clauses, but it is not a clause first one. So, let us bring it to that form. So, there we have for each x, for each x, for each y, there is z. So, you have to use collimation. So, with collimation, z might depend on x and y, but z occurs only with x in a predicate, with y it does not occur. Fine. So, z will be replaced by some function of x, say f of x y is not important there. So, it get T y and B x y implies P f of x and R x f of x. Okay, the first one. Then of course, this will be omitted all this we get, but then we need close alpha right. This is implication you have to bring it to C and F. So, this will give not of T y and B x y or P f x and R x f of x. Okay. Now, you have started omitting this. Okay. So, that will give what not T y or not B x y or P f of x due to De Morgan and R x f of x. Yes, any problem? Right. Next we distribute because we want uh, C and F. So, this gives not T y or not B x y or P f x and not T y or not B x y or R x f x. Okay. So, now we have the clauses as uh, this is one class right not T y or not B x y. So, let us write the clauses or P f x one more not T y or not B x y or R x f of x. Next from this not P o next T b next B a b. But before applying resolution, we need to see that they do not share a variable. Still, these two clauses share a variable, right. So, we should rename the variables before applying resolution. So, here we have y repeated, x is also repeated, fine, those two we have to rename. So, let us rename here itself, we get T v, y is v x is let us say w so this is the set of clauses from which we have to get bottom by resolution we should have a resolution refutation of this set of clauses so these are the clauses now how do we go about we should have a strategy say tb and this might resolve quickly Okay. So, let us start with T b, it is a hypothesis. Second, we introduce not T y or not B x y or P f of x. Now, use the resolution. So, T b not T b not T y they unify with y as b, that is the most general unifier. So, we substitute y with b here, forget those two, take the others. Right? 
so resolution gives not b x b or p f of x 1 2 resolution with x as y as b okay next we have b a b let us introduce that so b a b hypothesis again we resolve so x should be replaced by a that is the most general unifier of not of b a b b x b so you get p f of a so this comes from 3 4 resolution with x substituted by a okay now not p u is there so they will result not p o hypothesis and 7 is bottom not of this unifies with u substituted by f of a so 5 6 resolution with u substituted by f of a that's it we have never used this huh? okay fine that's how resolution will proceed let's take one more example so like suppose you have some b plus c equal to d plus right how do you proceed proving that b equal to d that is your cancellation law in groups okay so what you do is take b plus c plus minus c on both the sides okay minus c is the inverse of c then we use associativity so it was like this earlier right then you use associativity to get b plus c plus minus c equal to d plus c plus minus c okay then we use identity element so you give b plus 0 d plus 0 that is definition of inverse itself right next property of identity element so you write b equal to d that is how you proceed by informal arguments okay so what have you used existence of inverse element property of the inverse element that that becomes zero and associativity and then property of the identity element these are the things you are using okay so let's see what are the axioms of the group itself fine so the group axioms you are using is okay what are available one is your closure rule right for every x and y there is z such that x plus y equal to z okay so for each x for each y there is z such that x plus y equal to z that is your closure of the addition next to use or uh, say associativity so it says for every x for every y for every z x plus y plus z equal to so let us write equal to this way x plus y plus z okay next identity element so identity element says there exists something which behaves like your identity right is that okay so that is for any x so you say there is x for every y such that y plus x equal to y that is what you have used here right side only left side I am not taking huh. okay huh. one one more bracket should be there na here it ranges over everything in associativity 
fine next you have the inverse element which says for each x there is y says that x plus y equal to that 0 huh? 0 element which is the identity. So, here we are telling call this this x huh? there is x for every y call this as 0. Okay. So, you can include directly as 0 does not matter a constant you can use that constant let us simplify it hmm? it will be easy for us. So, there exists x that x is called 0 so we just take it now it is combined right. So, then we say for every x there is y such that x plus y equal to 0 y is the inverse of that fine these are the four axioms of the group. Now, when you write in causal form how will they look? First thing is you cannot write this plus symbol that is a function of it is a binary function two body function say f of x y right. Next equal to is there anyway 0 will introduce as it is then one more is this one for every x there is y. So, when you scolemize it will say x plus some h of x equal to 0 right. When you scolemize this, so this y will depend on x automatically. So that means x plus some h of x equal to zero, right? So that will be our class directly. So let's write the in class form. It will look like f of. We start from this. Uh, f of x, comma h of x. Okay, equal to zero. So equal to some constant. Which constant will write? We can write zero, but let's write c in our language. You just omit it, right? Closal form. In closal form, every free variable is universally quantified, right? So you are directly writing the clauses. Next, for every y, y plus zero equal to c. So that is f of y comma c equal to y okay. this one next this one how do you do for every x for every y there is z x plus y equal to z. So, this is really f of x plus y. So, f of x plus y exists for every x y that is what it will say right we assume that implicitly we do not have to worry fine or you can say this z depends on x and y. So, write z equal to some function this is already f of x y. So, f of x y equal to g of x y that is what it will say fine let us go to next one associativity. So, that you can write as uh, f of let us not use x and y right say u v and z already two classes are there. So, let us write u again f f of u v comma z z we can use equal to f of u comma f of v comma z. Okay. Abelian, abelian group is not required here, right? We are just taking a group. Is that fine? Next, we wanted to prove the cancellation law. So, there is a premise given. Premise is B plus C equal to D plus C. Okay. From that this C is cancelled, you get B and D. That is what fine. So now Huh? We have already used C. Huh? Let us change something. So, let us write E. Huh? Let us write as E. Fine. 
So now something is given f of b comma c equal to f of d comma c. Okay, from which we want to see that this entails b equal to d. Fine, that should be our conclusion. This entails b equal to d. So we also assume not of b equal to d and try a refutation of this. Fine, this is the formulation. Now I have to go for the resolution proof. B plus C equal to D plus C. Let us start from there. So that says F of B C equal to F of D C hypothesis. Okay. Next what we are doing? B plus C we are adding with minus C. So that means F of whatever is given, comma h of c right inverse that is our h now. So, comma h of c how do we do that? Huh? From this we want to see that f of f b c comma h c equal to f of f d c comma h c we want this to follow which rule will allow it to do? Hmm? See, it is the closure rule that is allowing us. This rule is allowing us. Whatever x y you take, we can add them to get an element. Right? So, that is assumed because f of any term will be another term and terms can always be interpreted. So, it is implicitly there in the semantics. Fine. Once it is a function, its semantics allows that there is an element, but then within resolution how to infer it that is the problem. Say f of take some p does not matter, okay. call it a variable. Now, p h of c equal to f of P H of C equality that P. If you want, you write S. First time you are using, so let us write S instead of P. S is there, so that is your XS. Now, this X of S, when you write, it is not necessary that every S will be substituted, it is not a variable to be substituted by a term. Any occurrence you can specify, that occurrence will be substituted, everything need not be substituted. Right? So, that is the freedom we have with paramodulant. So, here suppose you take this S and unify this T, this is your U. Fine. With T and U, you delete that class T equal to U, you delete X S and introduce X of U. In place of S, you are using some U. So, let us write here this S I am replacing by U, it is there. Okay. The other S I do not have to replace, it is kept as it is. Fine. So, now what happens? If that is my S, this is my X, where S is there, X S will give me X of U. So, here it should have been S. Right? That is your X of U. Is that okay? U is f of dc, t is f of bc. So, t equal to u is deleted in x of s, one s or many s s, you can substitute by that u. So, that is what I have done u, other one is left as it is. Fine. So, one step is okay. This is the third one, which is obtained from 1 and 2 by paramodulation. So, in fact, it is the sigma s t. Remember, if that is your s and this is your t, then on x u you have to apply sigma, right. So, what is your sigma here? 
m g u of m g u of s and t two terms s and t right s is a variable here s t is f of b c so there m g u is s by f of b c right so this paramodulant should have sigma as s by f of b c so this s will be f of b c is that clear now so it follows by paramodulus so so what i do i take t equal to f of bc u equal to f of dc right so i have one class t equal to u another class x of s so what is my x of s this s i forget this in that formula this s i am concentrating that is x of s okay now i have to delete t equal to u delete x of s introduce x of u right so x of u means this s will be replaced by u so here it is s fine here it is u from this okay that is my x of u where s is here fine but then paramodulation says on x of u apply sigma sigma is the most general unifier of s and t so s is here t is here their most general unifier is s by f of bc that when applied on h of u x of u s is replaced by f of bc so directly this comes yes 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 that's what paramodulation says you don't have to replace everything if you replace everything then there is no meaning of taking most general unifier right so one or many instances of that s can be seen you can identify them as x of s so there is some non determinism there right suppose there are many occurrences of s i can take only one occurrence i say this is my x of s everything is in x that s i will be substituting i can take identify 3 or 4 even all of them will be substituted at a time the other one s will be remaining right i can introduce everything also s suppose everything s then it becomes f of dc hc f of dc hc that's all ha huh. okay so this requires some practice of paramodulation so basically you can says some instances of s can be replaced by u and some by t at the end of the day yes that's right because t equal to u that's what paramodulation means since t equal to u wherever s occurs some of the s i can replace by t some of the other i can replace by u paramodulation allows it right so that's what we really need in this argument we are doing like that some of them i replace by b plus c some of them i replace by d plus c in my expression okay clear now let's go further so what is the next step we have done associativity we have used associativity on both the sides now associativity we have one class for that so use that f of what is our class in terms of uh, u v z u v z equal to f of u comma f of v z right this is our hypothesis it's available with us as a class now what we want here is this z should be hc this f of bc u should be b v should be c then one side of that will come right is that okay but what do we get here is f of bc hc will be giving f of b comma f of c hc so two steps will be required at a time you cannot do here fine so what we want here is that from this and this we should get f of f of bc comma h of c is equal to f of 
v comma f of c comma h c right this would follow one side of it okay that is again paramodulation yes with what paramodulation with what with what you will be taking that paramodulation. Suppose you take t equal to u here, this is my t, this is my u, right. Then this is my x of s, s is say z or something, okay. Now what you do? z should be replaced by something, which thing you will replace? This is equal to z will be replaced by h c. Then but u will introduce d again if you take t equal to u then when you take x of t it will introduce the whole thing here do you see huh? see the problem or not first you have to realize the problem see from these two you want to infer this how do you infer with associativity what do you say u should be substituted by b v c by c z by h c, but that is which rule allows that, which rule will allow that from this it will follow. Yes, okay, let us see temporarily you have p x, you want to infer p c from it, how do you do it? You cannot do it here in resolution. There is no rule to do it. Right. So, how to get this in resolution? You can write it as a derived rule once you do it. Before it, you cannot do. Right. You have to do through resolution only. Now, how to do it by resolution? From Px, how do you infer Pc? Well, this inference we can do twice, say Px and not Pc and that entails bottom by resolution therefore, p x entails p c right. But this becomes a derived rule now, if you have x of x 1 to x n and then you can infer x of t 1 to t n that becomes a derived rule directly by resolution it does not come, it comes as a meta theorem now, you can use that meta theorem and get it done right just by resolution but paramodulation also can do it. For example, with p x I introduce c equal to c equality fine. Now, this is my t, this is my u, this is s. So, t equal to u gone, x s gone, x of u I get p c. s is x that is replaced by u, u is c and t equal to u. So, most general unifier is empty, empty substitution right. Sigma is equal to empty substitution itself because t equal to u. Now, t equal to s when you take x will be substituted by c from t and s you want most general unifier not t u. So, that is x by c right, but once you replace this, this becomes p c there is no x. So, even if you apply it does not matter same p c remains. So, by paramodulation this follows right, you do not have to go to resolution again by paramodulation inside the proof you can do. Then here similarly if you do, you have to do really three steps b equal to b then get b v z as it is, then c equal to c get v by c as it is, then z equal to h c equal to h c then z h c will unify you will get this. So, three steps it will take. Right. So, what we do? We will make a shortcut here. We will write phi pass b equal to b, c equal to c, h of c equal to h of c. Right. We will write equality. 
then three times using paramodulation you get this right so by paramodulation for five paramodulation Okay, clear how this step is going. Next, similarly, this is sixth step. Then seventh, what do we do? From this side, we have to do something from the other F D C H C. So we'll again take D equal to D, C equal to C, H of C equal to H of C. Really, this if you do step by step, these two will not be necessary because they are already introduced somewhere, right? C equal to C will be another line, H C equal to H C will be another line. So, you can again use those two, you do not have to write, but this is a better mnemonic for us that we are using these things. Then 8 will be F of F of D C H C equal to F of D F of C H C this is 6 uh, not 6 7 and 4 again right 4 7 parameterization what we have got f of f b c h c equal to b f c h c f of f d c h c equal to f d f c h c from these two you wanted to conclude these two are equal right it is like x equal to y and then what else we have x equal to y then y equal to z uh, then x equal to w therefore z equal to w uh, three things will be used this one sixth eight three six and eight right see f of b c h c equal to f of d c h c now f of b c h c equal to f of b f c h c therefore these two will be equal again the other one will be used and to conclude that step right now from 3 and 6 let us see this one 3 and 6 from these two we wanted to conclude f of f of b c uh, b C H C is on the left side, so this one, these two will be coming. F of B, comma, F of C H C equal to F of F of D C H C. Look at three and six. This is one, say alpha. First one is also alpha, right? alpha equal to beta, alpha equal to gamma. So, you want beta equal to gamma. We wrote as gamma equal to beta. Okay. Now, how do you get it? Okay, Let us take it in that form, alpha equal to beta, then we have alpha equal to gamma, we want gamma equal to beta this is how it should come right does it follow by parameterization so let us take alpha equal to beta as t equal to u finally you have something beta is there so this is t this is u now s is what alpha let me identify this as alpha okay or this as alpha something one of them i have to take as a s then what happens? S will be S will be replaced, this will be going, this will also be going. I have to take x of u. So, suppose I take alpha as s, then this will become beta, beta equal to gamma will follow. Is that right? So, let us write that way. So, beta equal to gamma that will follow. If I take this as t, this as u, this is my t, this is u, this is s. So, this is my excess. So, finally, x of u equal to whatever it is, x of u is beta equal to gamma and s t their most generally unifier is empty because they are same here. 
Name? So it will follow beta equal to gamma. Fine. So let us write then in that form instead of this form. So we get f of f of d c comma h c equal to the other one f of b f of c h c. Okay. This follows by 3, 6 parameter. You have empty substitution as the most general unifier. Clear? Next, you want to use what? 3 and 8 similarly. Okay. If you use 3 and 8, F, D, C, H, C, that will be your alpha now. Right? That common thing is your alpha, and one of them is beta, the other one is gamma. Right? So, which side you take? It does not matter, this will be equal to this. Right? We have already f of b c h c, so we can write that. So, we can write 10 is f of b f of c h c. equal to f of d c let us see this is again 3 8 parameter we want really one of this we do not need both of them any one of them should have done right is it not see d c and h c we want to combine so, they are combined here, B C F C we wanted to combine, they are combined here. Okay. So, what we want is we should have B F C H C and D F C H C that is what we have got. Okay. So, then to get it you have to use what 3 and 8 does 8 give F D C H C is F D of F C H C. So, these two are combined these two will be same. Then you get B C not this. Huh? If you use that 3 8 you would get in this form F B C H C in this form you will get ah, that is what that is what we wanted in this form right. right we want the other format not if you use 3 you will be getting this form only. Yeah, but you use 8 and 9 directly. Yes, 8 and 9 if you use, we will get the required one. Clear? So, we really wanted this form f of b f of c h c. So, you have to use 8 9 parameters. So, this is only the trickiest part in the resolution method. Because it depends on which one you want, that is how you will be choosing the premises and getting the conclusion. Now, once this is done, we have come up to this stage of our argument, fine, this stage really. Now, you have to go for c plus minus c equal to 0, that is to be done. So, that means c h c should be replaced by 0 now, which premise gives that? x x equal to e f of x h x equal to e that is a hypothesis. Now, with this we want to substitute get c and x equal to b you want no, no f of c h c only you want right. So, c equal to c is required it is already introduced somewhere. 5 there, okay, 5 there, let us forget this, this is only for our reference, huh. it is already there. In fact, this 5 will be 5, 5 prime, 5 double prime, huh. 2 stages are there. Okay, that is already there, so then we say 12th that gives f of c h c equal to e. So, that is from 5, 11 parameter. So, these heuristic rules really help. 
once we know one equality is there, it will follow like that P x then P c will follow, how? By introducing c equal to c. Okay. Then similarly, 13 we want d equal to d that is in 7. So, we get f of d, no that is not required, we do not require this, right. From this we can go. Now, 13, what we will get here? This is your t, this is your u, right? This is your s completely. Okay. So, replace them, you get f of b comma u which is e right so it will come in f of b e equal to f of d you can take this s also simultaneously many s s you can take at the same time so this will arise e so this gives uh, 10 12 parameter x of u, so you can identify both the s and then replace. Huh? So, we are at this stage now, b plus 0 equal to d plus 0. Next we need a premise, which one? f of y e equal to y. So, 14th f of y e equal to y, that is the hypothesis. Okay. So, again we need here is what? From 5 is b equal to b. So, take here. Huh? So, 5 14 would give f of b e equal to b. Right? You need b equal to b there. So, that is your 5. 5 14 parameter 16 will be f of d e equal to d similarly, but that is in 7 now, 7 14 parameter Okay. Then from this 13, 17 is 13 and 15, 15, 16, then you need 13. Hmm. So, let us say 13 and 15, 13 and 15 would give b equal to f d. Okay. So, 13, 15 parameter lesson. Next you need one more 18 that gives 16, 17 b equal to d. Next, it is not over hypothesis. Eighteen nineteen resolution. Okay. So that's how we have to proceed using parameter lesson. But recall the heuristics we have used; those things will be really helpful. 